I'd, I'd like to welcome everyone to this uh, webinar uh, today. Uh, the topic is about the uh, sustainable models of education uh, following the pandemic. And in particular, we are going to talk about the recently funded uh, project that is called Extended uh, Squared. Um, the seminar has four presentations. Uh, the first one is coming from uh, Professor uh, Marcelo Millard. Uh, he's at Linnaeus University in Sweden, and he's going to talk about uh, the project uh, and give us some details about the project. I leave it to Marcelo to say more about uh, his uh, uh, professional uh, activities. Uh, the second talk comes from Professor Kronis Kinigos. Uh, he's coming from uh, the National Kabodistrian University of Athens, and he's going to talk about uh, design thinking, uh, a critical perspective to design thinking. Uh, the third talk uh, is from Dr. Marianthi Griziotti. She's also coming from the National Kabodistrian University of Athens, and she's going to talk about emerging digital technologies. And the last talk is from myself. I am a professor at the Open University in the UK, and I'm going to talk about co-designing and co-creating uh, material with teachers. Uh, I will stop sharing, and I will ask uh, Marcelo to give us the first talk. Marcelo, please share your yes, screen. Yes, okay. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, nice to be here. Thank you for the invitation. And nice to see that we already have more than 50 people online and the number is growing. Um, my name is Marcelo Milrad. I represent Linnaeus University in Sweden, in which I work as a professor uh, in the field of media technology. I work at the Department of Computer Science and Media Technology, where I'm a professor and subject chair there. And um, as part of the work I have been doing for almost two decades, uh, I have been uh, working a lot in the field of technology enhanced learning, looking at different aspects of uh, mobile learning, uh, inquiry learning supported by web technologies and so on. So um, it's not strange that uh, I'm working in this project and we work together with people uh, those that will be presenting after me that we know each other for a while because we have similar research interests. So what I'm going to do is just to give a short overview of what this project is about. The name of the project is Extending Design Thinking with Emerging Technologies and the name is Extended T2. Uh, this is uh, supported by the European Union and a special call on digital transformations for learning with ex emerging technologies. <laughs> emerging technologies support teaching and, and training and is part of the Digital Europe. Uh, the project has been granted last year, but we have started formally uh, six months ago. So, so this is a little bit... Uh, as it happens with this type of European projects, we have formed a consortium and we are eight partners uh, from different countries in Europe. And it's interesting to see that despite all these changes in the political geography of Europe, still we can collaborate with uh, two partners in the UK. One is the Open University where TIA works and another one is University College London. Uh, so in addition, we have uh, the, co the colleagues from Greece, Sweden, the UK, the University of Ghent in Belgium, uh, the, Norwegian, the Norwegian Technical University in Norway, Trinity College in Ireland, and we have a, a, a small and middle-sized uh, enterprise within the field of IT. So this is one small representation of a company in the project. And, uh, and uh, <clears throat> I'm going first to try to set the context for this project and what was the uh, main ideas and what is the challenge which we are trying to address. The first is connected to 21st century skills and 21st century digital skills, the notion of digital competence. Uh, another issue is that addressing uh, the call is how someone can conceptualize and design new pedagogical 
interventions using emerging technologies into the school curriculum. And I will explain later what do we mean by emerging technologies. Uh, the notion of also computational thinking and different ways to work with ideas of problem solving and programming across domains, not just in math and technology or just STEM related topics. Uh, how to deal also with teachers professional development while working with these approaches that have to do with design thinking in which Cronis is going to tell more in details later and emerging technologies. And one important issue that is how we conceptualize the idea of sustainable innovation. And uh, if you have these uh, points in mind, also I think it's important to have the idea of which are the global challenges we're facing and, uh, and how we think about preparing the future generations to be good problem solvers, good, good problem identifiers and try to think about how to deal with the challenges humanity is facing, among other things, climate change, migration, health related issues, poverty. So these are at the core of the agenda. Um, important to mention, and just is just setting the, the context is, this is one slide, uh, one idea coming from the World Economic Forum. And I, may, I guess you may be familiar with uh, that environment, but this is one slide in which uh, different people representing different stakeholders have tried to address which are the top, or which could be the top 15 skills that organizations require for the year 2025. So having this point of view in mind, so if you look at analytical thinking and innovation, complex problem solving, critical thinking and analysis, technology design and programming, and reasoning problem solving and ideation. There are some of the overlap concepts that we are addressing in this project. They have many things in common with the definition of what computational thinking is and also what design thinking is. So this is just trying to set the stage. And um, what is our value proposition is that we're trying to explore in which ways emerging technologies can be used to enhance to enhance the pedagogical value while dealing with digital transformations in education and how design thinking as a method could be used to achieve those goals. Uh, another one is the idea that design thinking that again, Cronis will come into details later, has the potential to have an important role when it comes to transformative pedagogical innovation. And, and uh, the other issue is that even some of these technologies have been defined as emergent, they have been around for a while, and the challenge is how to, in, to combine these technologies with existing and maybe novel pedagogical approaches to support the notion of sustainable innovation. So the transformation evolves over time and it's not just a radical one. Mm -hmm. uh, what are we talking about in terms of technologies? And I think this is one of the reasons uh, that uh, our project has been granted is the fact that rather than to ask for funding for developing new technologies, well, the point of departure is that there are a number of existing technologies and tools among the members of the consortium. And what we want to do is to expand and to enhance them by bringing different flavors of emerging technologies. So we have a, a number of them that are presented in this slide. So MALT2 is a platform for both visual and text based programming in mathematics. Sorbet is another type of Tetris like game. Choico is a platform for dealing with social scientific simulations and even some flavor of programming. programming. Another platform for dealing with virtual robotics and N Enquire that you may be familiar if you were collaborating with the Open University is a platform to support designing and managing scientific studies with students. So these are existing platforms 
tools, all of them web-based, that we're going to enhance with emerging technologies. And in the context of our project, uh, the emerging technologies are augmented reality. I guess you're familiar with most of these concepts. Learning analytics, that is to try to keep good monitoring. Of, of course, we're aware of all the issues related to AI ethics. Uh, but the idea here is how you can monitor what students are doing online in order to be able to get the support they require in, in order to make uh, teachers' life a little bit less complicated with most of the work is done online. Then we're talking about 3D printing and artificial intelligence and kind of feedback based on that. And um, by putting all together, this is a kind of a visual that represents what we're trying to do. The five steps uh, with these hexagons represent the different phases of design thinking and how we're going to use all these different platforms to try to create. And this is the added value and the con contribution in terms of technology, the AI learning analytics component and the most important will be this type of learning analytic dashboard that should be a kind of authoring tool for allowing different stakeholders to visualize the data that they feel is relevant to them. And as usual with this type of projects, we have different activities that in the EU terminology are called working packages. So we have uh, several of them. And, uh, my colleagues will represent different aspects, but we have one working on theoretical aspects of learning emerging technology and design thinking. That is the work package two, that is the theoretical framework. Then we have other activities like co-designing with teachers, that is under the package, work package number three, school interventions, shaping technologies, and teachers' professional development. And of course, one important aspect is which type of methods and metrics you use for evaluating these efforts and especially having in mind that will be a relatively mass scale intervention with several thousand of students and teachers. And in terms of expected outcomes, uh, they are aligned with what I mentioned before, trying to see which novel ways are for and assessing the risk for how you can work with digital transformations and transformative pedagogies in education. And uh, when we talk about education, we're talking about in the context of K-12, that is from elementary to secondary schools, we're not talking about university here. It may be a little bit with teacher training programs, but not more than that. Uh, and uh, one important uh, expectation is also to be able to have some evidence uh, to influence policy making across these European countries. Mm -hmm. uh, what are in the long term, and um, I'm just trying to wrap up with what educational innovation is, and is, and this is not a new process. The introduction of ICT in different learning environments has been going on for almost 30 years. So, but when it comes to what we're experiencing now, and especially with the launch of AI-based tools like like us such as chat GPT-3 or new versions of Bing produced by Microsoft allows for new challenges. And these things are changing the learning conditions in which people teach and learn. And this creates new roles and obligations for both education, educators and students. These are not well-defined yet. Uh, some people or some researchers, they call that a new learning ecosystem perspective, kind of paradigm shift. And, uh, and this is, a, I will believe also that there is a need for new ways of collaboration between different stakeholders, including teachers, students, parents, uh, researchers. And, uh, and when you work in that way, there is a need for looking at uh, alternative evaluation methods that differ from the traditional ones. And uh, one important aspect is how do you deal with, with beyond innovation? This there, there is a kind of limitation with this European project in which we get funding, 
will work for three years and suddenly when the intervention may work because it's scaling up, then the funding is gone and then we cannot continue the work. So it's there is a challenge on how to do or how to deal with this idea of sustainable innovation. Um, this is a kind of new learning ecologies that I'm trying to visualize what I said before. And uh, they have some people and some colleagues, researchers that have been looking at what does it mean sustainable innovation in terms of technology and education. These people have been identified some dimensions. They talk about economical sustainability, social, political, technological, pedagogical. But I think one important dimension that we cannot ignore is this one, design sustainability. And this is what we want to bring as an added value to this with this project. And, uh, and this one that is connected a little bit with data and information and knowledge and this how educators or teachers that they are now faced to work more and more with digital tools, they can learn how to deal with this notion of being becoming knowledge managers or, or, or knowledge mediators. So this is uh, not a new challenge. It's not, it's not a new phenomenon for the schools or for the educational sector, but it's new in terms of the distribution over time and space and forms that is the knowledge management driven by technology and why this is important and, uh, because we, we believe that and the the title of the of the discussion today is about sustainable models of education and this is a little bit what we're trying to do in this project from this perspective uh, explore online and distance implementation of both teaching and learning look at novel ways of professional development, co-design as a concept, design thinking as a pedagogical approach, web-based emerge, web emerging technologies, as I explained at the beginning, and this idea of how AI may have the potential to support both teachers and students when they work in this type of new environments. Uh, and one important, and again, there are some nice reference um, they're relatively still recent, but they become classics because they have been cited many times. This is from Peter Goodyear that has identified several years ago, more than a decade ago, a kind of research challenge that is still valid for this kind of project that we represent. And he wrote already, he was before at Lancaster University. Now he has been for a while in Australia. And there are two interesting aspects here. The, the idea that learning is shifting in terms of space and context so learning is taking place about distributing a wide variety of contexts what we have experienced in the last two years with COVID is a clear example and the second change and if I think it's central and is very well connected to what Cronus is going to talk after me is the the conception of educational praxis and we need to emphasize on the central importance of design and design thinking is one approach so for those of you that would like to have a look. This is a reference, and this will be both on on in YouTube, so you can take a picture later if you're not doing it now. And in terms of collaboration opportunities, uh, and it's part of our working package and dissemination, is we're trying to promote knowledge exchange, common activities, uh, public outreach. Uh, we're open to work with schools, and this is part of uh, the process in recruiting teachers from different countries that would like to try out and validate these ideas with their own classrooms and also of course in this type of research and innovation project the idea of scientific publications is crucial mm -hmm. so i think i used the time i had uh, if you have further questions these are my coordinates this is the URL for the project that is still growing as the project uh, continue to develop. Um, uh, and again, thank you for the contribution of the European Union and the program Digital Europe that is making this possible. Mm -hmm.
Thank you okay. so much, uh, Marcelo. We have maybe time for one question. Uh, I'm checking the chat and uh, there, are not, there are no questions at the moment. I mean, feel free to drop your questions either in mm. the chat or the questions and answer um, link uh, below. Um, uh, so nice to see that there are a variety of people coming from Europe, uh, Africa, Asia. It's nice. Yeah, it's really nice to see the diversity of participants. Thank you so much for joining. So let's move to the second uh, presentation by Professor Kronis Kinigos. Okay, uh, so hello, every hello everybody and uh, thanks for joining this webinar. I'll just share my screen too. Um, Okay, so um, I live at the edu uh, Educational Studies Department at the School of Philosophy um, at the oldest and most well-known university in Greece, University of Athens. And um, I'm working for and uh, directing the Educational Technology Lab, with where for the last 30 years, we have been trying to think up come up with um, innovative approaches to education. We perceive the education system as a system under transformation. And um, we're trying to find ways to make uh, the educational process meaningful to students and to everybody involved um, and to help cultivate this idea of, uh, of uh, citizenship in the digital era, uh, era where we live. So, with respect to extended to, um, I'll be talking about this kind of innovation, which is called design thinking, uh, where it came from, how it has been perceived so far, uh, a little bit about some criticism, critical appraisal of, of the ways in which design thinking has been implemented in education systems up until now, and the ways we feel that um, we can help uh, with uh, addressing some of these um, uh, criticisms and uh, in really enhancing uh, and um, enabling the potential of design thinking as uh, an innovation geared towards um, citizenship and uh, meaningful and relevant learning for students. So what is it? What is this design thinking? Where it comes from um, a world outside mainstream education, uh, actually in the tertiary education. And it's a kind of uh, method uh, and a type of project in uh, places where industrial design happens. Um, there were some uh, colleagues, uh, especially, um, for instance, still the Becker from the Interaction Design and Children community that identified certain uh, aspects and certain parameters of this kind of activity as being potentially useful for mainstream education and uh, have tried to transform and shape design thinking so that it could be useful in uh, primary and secondary education as a project, a transdisciplinary project. Um, and um, as uh, a, an activity for students working in groups so that they engage in creating things together in, uh, the, in designing things together, in engaging with real life issues, as you can see on the slide, um, dealing and grappling with uh, problems that are wider, uh, environmental problems, dietary problems um, that uh, do not exactly have a solution and are not designed for students of the respective age to be able to resolve. How do you uh, include these problems and become an active agent in addressing them and getting to grips with them. Um, in uh, designing tools and services to meet identifiable problems in individual society and environment. So, so far, it's been quite a long time, more than 10 years, that design thinking project work has been tried out in a few schools. Uh, it has provided a lot of promise as an innovation but has fallen short um, of, um, of dissemination and uh, success. And these are some of the reasons along four axes that we have found in the, lit in the literature um, discussing design thinking and its potential from a critical point of view. 
Uh, one has to do with the learning process, the actual learning um, and the content. The other one has to do with the ways that a teacher can learn about how to implement design thinking and uh, how to design for design thinking um, about the school context as a whole. How do you implement such a thing in the stringent uh, working environment of a school and some overall criticism. So just to um, put um, um, wade you through these um, four issues. Um, first of all, with respect to learning, um, it was noticed that students were made to feel very confident uh, because they were put in a place where they could resolve a problem or address a very hard issue. But this led, of course, to um, overconfidence, which then came back on their identity and their progress in schooling, since, of course, uh, you, can, you cannot have, um, uh, at least very often, uh, school children uh, resolving problems that uh, humanity hasn't resolved yet. Um, it exposed um, the, the challenge of learning through productive failure. Uh, students um, were met with the anxiety and the stress of not um, being su successful the first time or of operating in groups where other um, uh, peers um, seem to be more successful. And um, the, what was needed for, was for them to have um, uh, special support on how to handle and mobilize failure to, um, and uh, push it towards um, positive uh, means of uh, understanding that this is the, the mechanism with which you learn things. Um, also that design thinking um, ex exposes uh, the, the lack of tolerance students have for ambiguity since in schooling uh, we present them with um, certified truths and, uh, and exercises and solutions that have one and, um, and tests that have one solution uh, or with um, uh, re, um, descriptions of history or of language that um, we, we present them as unambiguous. So um, in design thinking, it's uh, not easy for them to, um, to grapple with the new, uh, new reality. Um, also, there were problems in group dynamics. It's very easy to say that we put students in uh, small groups to collaborate together, but um, there's, a, there's a lot of teaching that needs to um, happen before um, a group dynamics can be mobilized to gain something that um, is over and above what they could achieve individually. Um, and also that there was a process, uh, there was a gap between the learning process and uh, everything that went on in this co-creative collaborative environment and the subject domain. It wasn't clear what exactly the students were learning with respect to the sciences or to the traditional um, silo curricula in schooling and uh, which uh, supports the academic thinking and the rigor that is uh, necessary for every citizen and um, it was noted that in design thinking projects this it was difficult for teachers to help students focus on this kind of uh, addressing of these problems. And uh, also um, the extent to which what was learned with each design thinking um, project that the students were involved in, um, how resilient it was, what, what the gains were after some time after they finished. With respect to the teacher, um, it, uh, teachers need professional development courses in order to get into the idea of this kind of project work, how to design for it, how to handle it, how to manage um, classroom in, uh, in real time. Um, it has been a, a challenge for teachers and um, we really need to find ways to engage teachers to become allies with us in, uh, in, this, in making uh, and producing this added value uh, from the use and implementation of design thinking. Also, um, with respect to school context, well, it's always a challenge to find time during schooling day uh, to implement an innovation. And um, so design thinking has been typically placed in situations where there was project work going on in schools. 
um, either the school club or a special hour for projects. Um, and um, that's the main way to do it, but it, it's certainly not easy and it changes and uh, provides a challenge to a lot of things uh, on, on, uh, with respect to time, with respect to curriculum script, with respect to the way that schooling is organized during the day, uh, that there's a time limit to everything, etc. Now, overall criticism is was that um, in the end, with all these um, problems going on with the implementation of design thinking, um, do we conclu conclude that design thinking is, uh, well, we, we found the word hot air in an, in an article. What was meant was that it didn't actually deliver what it promised uh, to use um, words coming from politicians or that um, um, it, it was just uh, innovation speak uh, and um, it was just a fashion that would, uh, would soon um, be uh, substituted by the next innovation. Uh, so what we wanted to see in, uh, in our project, our extended project, was to identify the qualities of design thinking, try to address these different points of criticism and use digital media uh, in order to find these ways to address them. Um, we uh, adopted the approach that um, emerging technologies don't just um, get invented and uh, come out in, uh, uh, in, in a field where there's nothing else. And uh, the, the name of the exercise is to use the emerging technologies as they, uh, as they emerge, but that they are technologies which can be integrated with um, digital media that are already in place and already have some proven added value for this kind of learning and this kind of um, innovation in, uh, in school life. And uh, to really enhance the digital media, which in turn enhances meaningful learning. So what we, are, what we use in Extended are a set of established media that Marcelo talked about, um, which uh, have the role of um, expressive tools for students to construct things with. Um, you could ask, what do they construct? Things that are of interest to students, they construct digital games, they construct models, animated models, things that they find value in, enjoy, but also have embedded concepts in the, in the way that they are used. So we wanted to enhance the educational value of design thinking with these technologies and um, and also provide in that way uh, a sustainable model for design thinking itself, since when the tool that, that students design with and the productions they make, uh, when they are digital productions, they can find them on the internet. They're very easy to access. Um, so, and they uh, are available to everybody and all of you who are attending this talk. Um, and um, they can be used for a large variety of, uh, of educational practices, one of which is design thinking. So we wanted to enhance this kind of media and uh, the ensuing design thinking practices with emerging technologies. So our approach in meeting the criticisms is first of all that we use these digital artifacts that what are they? They are authoring systems. They are tools with which anybody can design things or they can change things other people have designed. Um, so they allow deep structural access to users. Um, but they are designed also so that they have embedded concepts and they afford um, the development of uh, computational thinking skills and the development of, um, of meanings and, uh, and uh, competencies that we originally wanted to be developed through design thinking. They cultivate creativity and they legitimize productive failure because it's very easy if you have a digital medium 
to make changes. So it doesn't matter if you try and you take the risk to try and to produce something that doesn't work because you can always change it as a result of um, noticing what doesn't work and why and putting it under discussion. So these are media, these are tools for modeling and co-constructions. We can also perceive them as tools for rapid prototyping. What does this mean? It means that when a group of students are engaged in trying to design uh, some production, um, they have tools with which they can create um, dummy versions of that production, prototypes, um, little applications or little productions that are part of the problem and try them out, test them out, show them to other people, and then use that process as a feedback in order to enhance what they have already built and improve it. Uh, so if you have digital technologies, you can engage in rapid prototyping, which means that prototyping becomes a way with which all these, um, uh, all these learning process and the co-creation and collaboration uh, happens. It's kind of seamless and there's a flow of prototypes as tools around which students discuss and think. Um, they are of, um, tangible um, and they are productions that not only address problems that are identified by their users as was the um, original uh, implementation of design thinking, but they are also productions that can be addressed to user enjoyment with them, a nice piece of music, a nice animated model, a nice digital game, um, and um, around which productions people may reflect on the issues involved and affording the use of these productions. So in that kind of way, when we enhance design thinking with digital technologies, we can consider embedding design thinking in the movements that at least in Europe we have, very strong movements in the education system of, um, of addressing transdisciplinary issues and not just focusing on a school that um, prepares um, university professors and academically uh, uh, academic excellence directed school but also a school that uh, cultivates citizenship and that it has equity and addresses all kinds of students and all kinds of learning um, that um, there's possibility for a very wide range of problem areas because digital media are extremely versatile and in effect are the results of uh, human creativity. So there isn't any constraint with respect to um, the tools that the students have to build with, um, including these wicked problems like environmental and dietary problems, problems that do not have an obvious solution but cause stress and, uh, and individuals and clusters of individuals need to be able to grapple with them and to be able to engage and operate in ways in which are hopeful for one day to improve or to resolve them. <clears throat> they are also connected um, using digital media with design thinking on ideas of uh, 21st skills 21st century skills, such as computational thinking, because making changes to these, um, uh, to these digital media involve the use of digital technologies, the use of computational thinking, problem solving skills and practices. Um, and um, there is um, no need at this point and at this level for students to feel that there is um, a lot at stake with what they will in the end produce, because after all, it's a digital medium and it can stay there it, and it can always have uh, the role and the identity of um, a medium under improvement, even when it's ready. So a couple of examples uh, to refer back to what uh, Marcelo said at the very beginning, um, we have authoring systems affording the idea of design for everybody, uh, embedding computational thinking skills, 
um, they uh, allow for uh, addressing socio scientific issues or from modeling and making choices and classifying. Here's one example. And in the slide that is going to be put up in Eden, you have the URLs to find those media yourselves and, uh, and uh, work with them, play with them, and then uh, send us uh, information that you're doing. So I'd be very happy to uh, receive um, data from uh, what, what happened. Um, one of them is a modeler. Uh, what um, users do is they use a programming language to create these figural three-dimensional models, which are then animated. So this one, in fact, is a fractal, but it's in three dimensions, and it's in the form of a, a bush, which is uh, swayed by the wind. These are two instances of the bush. If I had time, I would, uh, but I would dra drag the sliders and show you how it changes in time. Another one is uh, very, very different to the first one. It's, um, it's a game designer for games based on the idea of um, the player making choices, but each choice the maker players has a set of consequences along a set of values. And there is no choice that has only positive or only negative consequences. So the idea of the game is for the player to sustain themselves on the game as long as possible. And this is a game about um, the, the pandemic era and things that people do um, that have, may have consequences of, of getting COVID, but also consequences of um, losing, in, losing out in physical condition, getting depressed, uh, having less sociability or spending too much money. So there's a set of, um, of very different um, uh, parameters, they're very different things one we then needed to think of. Um, and the last simulator is a simulator which is a, like Tetris, if you know the game, only things are falling off the sky, only instead of, uh, of, um, of turning them around, what you do is you push them to fall into the right category. And this is, uh, for instance, a game um, where uh, you need to very quickly think of all of these items, a bag of chips, some rubber, a pair of trousers, some rope, how many years it might take for them um, to, um, uh, to, to, bio, uh, to disintegrate um, if, they, if they put on the, on the ground. Um, so this is something which is totally authorable, uh, the kind of um, objects that fall on the sky and which categories you choose. Here's another instance of the, of the game. These games are developed by students, by the way, um, where here it's very hard to think about how to classify the object. So the game was used to start a, a discussion about the affordances of each of these social media. You see Facebook, you see TikTok, Netflix, um, and uh, it's quite hard to think on which category to put them in. Uh, and um, I'm sure that they mean different things to meet different people who use them. So the game was designed and played for students to come up into a discussion and an argument of the functionality, the usefulness and the relevance of these social media. So uh, as uh, my colleague Marianne Figriziotti will be talking to you next, uh, what we wanted to do was to take some um, emerging technologies and integrate them with these tools and see the extent to which we could enhance the sustainability of design thinking and the employability, the way in which it can spread into realistic um, project work in schooling. Here are some contacts from me. Uh, I think um, I'm done. I don't want to take any more time, but you can find links to our department and to the project. Uh, to our lab, and also you can find links from our lab to all these tools. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, uh, much. Thank you yeah. so much, uh, Clonis. We have time just for one question, um, but it seems that there is nothing in the chat. I mean, if you come up, can come up with a question, feel free to put it in the chat and we can follow up later. Uh, so, Marianthi, over to you. We cannot hear you well. 
Okay, C can you hear me now better? That's uh, very good, yeah. Thank okay. you. Um, just... Okay, so hello from me as well. Um, I hope you yeah you can see my screen. So I'm Marianne Cristiotti. I'm a, a researcher in the extended uh, project, uh, and also a lecturer in the Department of Educational Studies with uh, together with uh, Kronis Kinigos in Athens. Um, so as uh, Professor Kinigos described before, design thinking is a quite promising uh, approach for education, but as uh, you saw, there are still important issues that need to be addressed so that it can become uh, more pedagogically grounded and uh, widely applicable and sustainable for uh, real school settings. Um, so in, in this project and in this uh, presentation today, um, we will try to tackle some of these issues by using digital technologies um, and specifically emerging digital technologies in design thinking projects, instead of using only uh, physical means, which are usually used in traditional design thinking activities, but not uh, a sustainable choice for today's education. So today we will discuss some of these technologies and how we envision that uh, they can support the digital implementation of design thinking uh, in uh, or in physical, virtual, or mixed uh, learning settings. So, um, as Gr Professor Kinigo said, instead of using emerging technologies from scratch, we will utilize some already uh, grounded uh, web-based digital tools. Um, the three web-based tools that uh, uh, Mr. Kinigo presented before. Um, and we will extend these tools with some emerging technologies and integrate them in uh, design thinking activities. So the aim is with that integration of emerging technologies and already existing um, digital technologies is to increase the current uh, scope, the educational potential and the sustainability in terms of applicability. Uh, in different settings of design thinking in mainstream schooling. So to make design thinking more uh, accessible and more sustainable in, uh, in different kinds of uh, settings, actually. Um, so what do we mean by emerging technologies? Um, as uh, Professor Milrad uh, mentioned uh, in the first presentation, by emerging technologies, we refer to any new and innovative technology that is currently in the process of development, testing, and implementation. Uh, and it is expected to mature and become widely adopted over the coming years. So there are technologies that are not widely used now, but they have the potential to bring added value to education. However, since they are emerging, we still don't know a lot about uh, their efficiency and um, how they can be used in meaningful ways uh, for education and learning. So in, uh, in our case, we have selected four of these technologies, which are artificial intelligence in the, forms, in the form of learning analytics, augmented reality, 3D printing and 3D scanning, and virtual robotics. And uh, we will try to to see how these technologies um, can actually help uh, education and uh, design thinking, teaching and learning. So uh, I will give you some examples of these emerging technologies um, and uh, how we, we are envisioning them to, to be used in, in the project. So some questions that we first, we, we want to answer before um, uh, during the project is um, whether the emerging technologies, these emerging technologies, that uh, the four emerging technologies uh, can support the sustainable uh, design thinking activities uh, in physical, virtual, and mixed learning contexts. What are the barriers, the opportunities, and the enablers 
of these emerging technologies for supporting sustainable teaching and learning of design thinking, which are the lifelong skills and uh, 21st century skills that students can develop when they are engaged in the digital design thinking activities with emerging technologies. And uh, what are the ethical aspects which are involved in the design and use um, of all the emerging technologies, but with more focus on learning analytics and analytics dashboard for uh, such open-ended creative activities, because this is a, a very current question uh, about ethics and uh, such kind of technologies. So these are the main questions that we will try to answer through the project the following years. And now let's see some examples of uh, these tools and uh, how we envision them to, to work in order to answer these questions. Uh, the first is the MALT2 authoring system um, that uh, briefly was presented by Mr. Kinigos. Um, in its current version right now, the, the, the version that you can uh, all use uh, through the web, MALT2 allows uh, students to create and share animated 3D figural models uh, with text-based programming and dynamic manipulation. So the, the models can vary from simple cubes, diamonds, to a complex DNA models or fractal trees like the one you see uh, on the screen. Um, this is the current version and we will extend this version with 3D printing uh, emerging technology so that these models can easily be exported and printed in a simple 3D printer, in any, any 3D printer, not a specific model. So by making that extension, we aim to enhance uh, some aspects of design thinking projects. Uh, first, we want to connect uh, the digital and the physical artifacts and representations, something which so far uh, they, they're being disconnected. So either you have something digital or something um, physical. So by making this connection, the, the digital tool uh, will allow the rapid and easy development of unlimited number of prototypes uh, with a very simple programming and uh, with the sliders, with the animation. Um, and then the, the physical tool will offer something tangible for further testing and uh, evaluation um, in, in the physical world. So uh, in that way, uh, the digital creations will become uh, more tangible and obtain uh, meaning for students since they are something that they can actually use, they can share it or exchange it uh, both in the digital and the physical world. Uh, also, in, in this approach, uh, students will use programming, uh, computational thinking, engineering, art, mathematics, uh, concepts from all these different domains, uh, having in mind the specific final product that will be actually printed and be used by someone else, making their target, the, the, the target of the activity more clear and more meaningful, something that is currently missing from design thinking projects to have a clear uh, target. Finally, since 3D printing uh, in many cases is, uh, has already been connected with uh, recycling, biodegradable materials and environmental awareness, we expect that it will enhance students' eng engagement with such topics um, and with uh, multidisciplinary real world uh, issues. So um, they can be engaged in design thinking projects that uh, deal with such uh, topics. So for example, this is one example, uh, one scenario of a design thinking project utilizing this technology uh, that it's called the biodegradable jewelry project. Uh, well, this project has not yet been implemented with students, but is planned to, to be implemented in the future. So in this project, uh, students about 15, 16 uh, years old, they work in small groups and the aim is to design jewelry for teenagers or young adults uh, that will be eco-friendly and uh, created with biodegradable material using the 3D printer. Uh, so following the design 
thinking methodology, the students first, uh, they can do some online research on the topic. They can ask the target audience, the teenagers about their preferences regarding jewelry through an online survey uh, that could be, for example, in the Enquire platform. Um, then they can uh, collaboratively use the, the online MALT tool, um, the web-based tool, to rapidly prototype 3D models of different kinds of jewelry. So they can create earrings, necklaces, pins, anything, anything they want. They can just uh, keep exploring and uh, creating different models. And uh, then they can share these models again online with uh, screenshots or with uh, links to, to, to the tool and ask other students or uh, adults how, uh, what do they think to give their feedback, et cetera. Uh, they can redesign their, easily their models in MALT2 many times, and then they can print the final uh, model, which would be actually an actual uh, jewel, an actual necklace or an actual earring with biodegradable filaments in a 3D printer and probably sell it to some uh, young adults or uh, make an exhibition in their school. Um, and they can use, if they sell it, they can use the money for something related to recyc recycling in their school, let's say. So this is a design thinking scenario uh, that happens mainly by using technology. They, it doesn't require anything uh, physical apart from the 3D printer. Uh, and this scenario can take place in both physical space in the classroom, but also in distant learning settings. So in the case, for example, of situations like COVID-19, uh, the students can actually uh, do this scenario uh, from their uh, home. So this is just an example, uh, a scenario that we will test in the future. And uh, the second set of technologies uh, that will be ended are the two game, game design applications that also Professor Kigos talked uh, before uh, that will be extended with augmented reality technology. Uh, the first tool is Choico, Choices with Consequences. Uh, you can see here its current version is an online authoring tool that allows the students to design their own games and also play uh, games uh, that are simulation games that deal with complex socio-scientific issues, like, for example, climate change, balanced diet, or for, for instance, uh, with COVID-19 pandemic, which is the example that you see uh, on your screen. In this game, games, uh, students as players, they have to make choices in a map-based setting. Uh, every choice has some conflicting consequences to a number of game fields. So for in this COVID game, uh, every choice affects a COVID risk, physical, fun of the player, etc. And the aim is to remain in the game for as long as possible. Also, uh, the students, as I said, they can design uh, all the elements of the game. They can change the map, the consequences, the um, available points, um, the, the game rules, and so on, with uh, some high-level tools with uh, block-based programming uh, and uh, uh, map design. So this, this tool, uh, it will be extended with geolocation and geocoding uh, features. This means that uh, the game scene, you can see here, uh, will also support uh, to represent real maps uh, drawn from Google Maps instead of static pictures that uh, is right now the, the, the case. And uh, it will also be extended to involve real-time data drawn from Google Maps for that area. So for example, it could uh, visualize traffic, temperature, or roadworks. Uh, that will affect the game interface and the game consequences um, as the game proceeds based on what happens in the real world. So this extension aims to offer a connection between the digital world of the game with the real world and the real data that what happens right now uh, in the world and gives students the chance to represent realistic problems that occur in uh, real areas through the game. So for example, in their neighborhood, their country, uh, et cetera. So students will have the opportunity to, in the game design area, 
they will have the opportunity to access, manage, and work with uh, actual data, real data, together with GIS, with map design and programming. Um, and in that way, connect digital skills, so programming and data handling, with empathy for uh, real, real world situations, which is um, different from just using programming and uh, imaginary data, for example. Um, so in that way, they will be able also to, we expect that they will be able to explore and represent issues that are both local, so something that happens uh, in their uh, area, but, but also global, in a global level. So they could create a game uh, for something that happens uh, in another country or uh, another continent. Uh, and in that way, they will increase their empathy and immersion with the problem even more, with the design thinking problem uh, even more. So this is the, the one, the, the second technology. And the third one is the classification, Tetris-like classification game called Sorbet. Um, in its current version, as you can see, uh, it's a game where about, as uh, Mr. Kinigo said, pushing the falling objects to the categories they belong to. Um, also, the, the, the users right now, they can uh, modify and design a new game by selecting the different kinds of uh, falling objects or by setting some rules like speed, density, etc. So this tool, uh, which is also web-based, will be extended to support interaction with gestures and bo body movements and voice. So the player, instead of using the mouse, will be able to control the falling objects uh, with their hands or with their voice. Um, the aim of that extension is to enable embodied learning, so learning through uh, body movements, but also to make collaboration between students more natural than using uh, one computer and one mouse. Um, we have seen that, especially in that game, collaboration is not working very well when they have just one screen, but by having students moving around in space and uh, uh, they can both use their hands to, to control the falling objects, collaboration could become um, more intense and uh, uh, they, it can prompt uh, discussions, mutual exchange of ideas, uh, and also skills like critical thinking, quick decision-making, and so on. Um, finally, it, it, with that extension, it will also combine a digital activity, which is a, a digital game, with a physical activity, something which is quite important, especially for distant learning uh, settings, to have this combination. Um, well, uh, these were the, the three learning tools that will be extended. But apart from that, of the learning tools, uh, another emerging technology that will be used in uh, extended uh, to uh, project is uh, uh, learning analytics. Uh, learning analytics will be used in all the in all the three tools. So, by learning analytics, we refer to to the process of uh, measuring, collecting, analyzing, and reporting data about the learner. Uh, for purposes of understanding and optimizing uh, the how learning uh, occurs and also the environment that the learning occurs in. So it's it's about uh, digital environments and uh, um, to evaluate learning in these environments. So this is the general definition. So for instance, it can be the capturing of uh, students' activity while they play or they design a game uh, in Choico and based on their actions to give them some, some feedback that is valuable for this specific activity. Um, the thing is that uh, even though learning analytics are not that new in education, uh, they have mainly been used for closed activities like quizzes or tasks that they have only one correct answer. Uh, on the contrary, there is lack of knowledge of how to use and design learning analytics for open-ended and creative activities uh, in which students are free to explore things or they can they design things in the way they want. 
like uh, char characteristic example is the design thinking projects. So how can we gather data and how can we analyze this data and provide feedback in such activities that they don't have one uh, core solution and one path to, to finish? Um, so this is a question we try to solve in the project. Uh, and in the context of design thinking, we believe that if such learning analytics can exist and can be designed, they can be, be really valuable uh, for different reasons. First, they can um, help teachers to develop a better understanding of the learning processes that take place in such open activities. Um, they can help teachers monitor the different groups uh, and the different activities that happen in real time, uh, both in physical and in distant learning. So they can monitor what students do and they can provide pro pro personalized support and feedback to students, even from in a distant uh, learning setting. So they don't have to be in the classroom, but with the help of analytics, they can support students who work in their home, for example. Uh, they can also support individual and group level assessment, uh, something that is uh, missing from the current implementation of design thinking. And they can provide valuable data, not only to teachers, but also to researchers for reflection of how the activity is going on. So in our project, uh, learning analytics will be used uh, to capture and export how students interact with uh, the three tools that uh, I presented before. We will create a learning analytics system that will be that the, the teacher will be able to author the feedback they want to give to the students and the customizable dashboard, which will be an accessible way uh, and user friendly way to visualize the collected data, both for researchers and teachers. Um, so our future steps are to in in the next months are to co to start co-designing activities with teachers and researchers with a focus on, on these digital technologies, to do some pilot studies uh, in different countries in Europe with students and collect some data, qualitative data, to analyze uh, the use of these technologies. And based on this analysis, we will extend the existing tools with emerging technologies, and then do the main cycle of interventions in year two and year three. And the overall aim of uh, the project is to, through three years, is to develop a framework that will be accessible to teachers and any stakeholders that uh, will address uh, the, the use of emerging technologies for design thinking. Uh, some conclusions very quickly, because I can see where. Uh, ahead of time. Um, so the, the point, the some points for uh, from today's presentation is that the use of always accessible web-based technologies could support design thinking in different settings, which so far design thinking has only been uh, implemented in physical settings. Um, the three authoring systems that we presented in which students can design their own models, their own games, and their own 3D uh, artifacts. They allow for continued experimentation, uh, for rapid prototyping, for designing and testing of ideas without any physical restrictions. So any student can design whatever they imagine uh, from their computer or from their tablets, for example. Um, AR and 3D printing technologies, 3D printing technologies can um, help the transformation of design thinking uh, activities, but also in general for, for all activities from subject specific to more transdisciplinary activities that uh, deal with real challenges and wicked problems. Uh, and it's something that uh, 21st century education uh, needs. Also learning analytics can be a solution for monitoring student progress in real time uh, and provide feedback in physical and distant learning settings, and uh, a teacher dashboard that represents uh, statistics of what students do with these technologies, help on reflecting and analyzing the learning process uh, in both, again, in both settings. So thanks for your attention. And these are some links as well, but 
the other presenters have already uh, shared them, and the links to the three web-based tools in their current form, not the extended one. Thank you so much, Marianne. Thank you. Uh, for the sake of time, I will move on to the last presentation. But meanwhile, I would like you to have a look at the question and answers, because there are two questions related to your talk. So if you could answer them there, it would be really great. Um, so I will share my screen. So hopefully you can see my screen. So my talk uh, is about co-designing and co-creating uh, with teachers. And just to remind you that teachers are the key actors in this project. And therefore we considered heavily how, what are the best ways of engage, engaging them with the processes, uh, the research processes and how we could work together to meet the project objectives. Um, Actually, in one of our work packages, we aim to work with teachers to identify a problem that could be solved with design thinking, find a solution to this problem, and also ask them to implement the, the proposed solution, which is our case is a series of lesson plans with their students. And then we want to evaluate and assess those uh, solutions to see how effective they are in terms of developing the 21st century skills, students 21st century skills. Uh, so in the proposal, we talked about the co-creation in terms of designing educational resources and material. Uh, in addition to that, and following discussions with the team, we thought that it's important to also uh, give teachers the opportunity to co-produce research with us. And by co-production, we mean that uh, we are giving teachers the opportunity, opportunity to become involved in as many or all of the stages of doing research. So if they want, they could collect data with us from the students, they could analyze data with us, they could help us interpret data, they could cause or papers with us, or they could take part in dissemination activities like talks and presenta presentations like the one we are having today. We know that this idea of co-production in, in research is quite demanding in terms of time, uh, but and therefore we don't expect the most teachers to endorse this idea, but for those teachers who have the time and would like to uh, receive this kind of professional development, we are really open to engage them in, that, in, the, in this way. I guess the reason why this is important is that uh, uh, we can achieve impact of research. The moment you have practitioners, in our case, teachers involved in the process, in the research process, process is more likely to be designing uh, solutions that meet their needs and also themselves can uh, disseminate and uh, amplify the solutions with their communities. Uh, of course, the process have, uh, we should, if we go down that route, we should consider things like uh, responsibility, accountability, power and ethics. Uh, there are lots of discussion in the literature as to how researchers and practitioners uh, should work together in an equitable manner, uh, how, for example, resources and funding is distributed, what are the responsibilities of each side, what are the efforts and benefits. So it's all about an open discussion and dialogue with those teachers that want to be involved in this capacity. Uh, the reason why we thought of how, what are the best way of engaging with, with teachers relate specifically also to design thinking. And what I brought up here is a relatively recent uh, review paper, which in a way suggests that the future studies in, the, in design thinking, they should be compatible with the teaching practice in K-12 education. And uh, they they should uh, meet teachers' needs uh, and demands. So anyways, by definition, if we want to design successful, sustainable models using design thinking and technologies, we need to start off by considering the teaching context. Who are our teachers? Who are their students? What is the school environment? What are the problems and challenges? What are the opportunities? So this should be the starting point. So teachers are at key, I would say, uh, to successful implementation in this project. 
so what is co-design and co-creation? Um, so by definition, this is a collaboration uh, between researchers and practitioners that uh, can result in innovation that fit into the real world, to, into real world context. Um, so the everyday practices of teachers are in the center and teachers are uh, contributing to the innovation through their practice. Uh, this idea of co-design of or co-creation -cre or even co-production I mentioned earlier is rooted very much to the idea of participatory design. Uh, so um, participatory design has to do with giving voice and engage uh, the people who have the experiences. So in our case, are the teachers who have the lived experiences of what teaching uh, at the school looks like. It's about empowerment. It's about giving them voice. And this actually can bring back benefits to the society. And the, the result of those processes is normally advancements and improvements in the area you are studying. As a side note, and I put it at the bottom of my slide, uh, recently there is a lot of interest uh, uh, regarding how we could engage students in the process of designing educational material. Uh, as students may have a say in the process, it's not just teachers, it's also students. This is something we are not uh, explicitly at least studying in the project, but I thought to put it here in case any of you are involved in those processes, that is good to consider how students could inform uh, sustainable models of education, for example. Uh, what I put here is the different ways we could potentially uh, engage, oh, sorry, I skipped the slide, is the different ways we could potentially engage teachers uh, with our research. And it's good uh, for those of us who are doing those, uh, who are going down that route to have an idea of what the possible options are. Uh, so as you can see, there are different ways of describing the, those forms of participatory research. Uh, in, in the first and top uh, graph, they call it community-based participatory research. And here the idea is that it's very relevant to co-produce research and what I talked about earlier, uh, the community members, in our case teachers, are involved in all stages of research, from the problem definition to the design of a study, to the process of data collection and analysis, and results and dissemination. But then there are also other forms of participatory design where you can see the teachers in the middle graph is called intended end users, are mainly involved in collecting data and less involved in understanding the needs of students or uh, being involved in co-authoring, for example, papers and dissemination activities. And this is similar to the user-centered design. They are mostly involved in data collection and less to in needs development and results and dissemination. Uh, now, the, we thought that it's important to uh, read more and familiarize ourselves with the principles of participatory research, as this, in a way, could guide us, guide us as to how we should engage teachers uh, with research. Um, so uh, what I have on the left is some principles of participatory research, and what I have on the right is how these translate in the context of schools and teachers. Uh, and you can see here, for example, number one is about... Uh, defining and learning about the community to be researched, in our case, teachers, uh, what their perspective, uh, perspectives are. So this for us means that we need to understand who our teachers are, what their needs are, what are their skills, expectations, and based on that, start building a relationship and ways we can develop educational material. Um, the second point refers to collaboration uh, to ensure that the diverse members of a community are involved. And this points to what kind of schools we are bringing on to the project. What is, for example, their socioeconomic background? Uh, are they representative of diverse types of schools? Uh, the third point has to do with um, uh, identifying or defining a research question. Uh, so in our case, this translates to how do we decide what topics we should examine, for example, using design thinking and how 
should we examine those topics? And this, is go this goes back uh, to the agency of teachers. Number four has to do with developing uh, uh, an agreement to guide the partnership. Uh, so this is about how we communicate and what kind of norms we put together when we are uh, working with teachers to design those material. Uh, then number five is about flexibility. And again, we need to hear the, the needs and voices of teachers. And we know that they have demanding workloads. So the time, for example, of activities should try to meet their needs. Uh, number six is about uh, opportunities for developing community capacity. Uh, and this links to how we offer professional development to teachers. For example, how do we help them understand what design thinking is and how do we help them uh, become confident in using our technologies? Uh, number seven is about involving those with lived experiences uh, in the process. And, and of course, in our case, we started with teachers who have the experiences of how to teach and they are our starting point. Number eight is about compensation to those uh, community members. So we thought really hard, what do we offer back to our teachers? And each partner came up with a different solution of what this benefit look like. Some of us thought of certificates by the university, some others thought of financial remuneration, and some others thought that the access to the tools and the early training could be a benefit uh, as such. And uh, number nine is about sharing products uh, associated with research. So we thought uh, how we could possibly engage teachers with dissemination processes and products. And I mentioned earlier co-authoring publications, but could well be uh, co-presenting or, or preparing uh, material about the project together. And the last one is about planning for knowledge sharing and community action. Uh, and again, it's uh, our intention to find ways to help teachers uh, uh, be part of the, the process of knowledge, knowledge sharing. Um, this slide, I will just go to that very briefly. Uh, it's about uh, implications from conducting uh, participatory research from a distance. And I say that because uh, uh, the teachers we have at the moment geographically are coming from diverse locations and having physical sessions where we go through those processes of, of uh, designing material may not be feasible. Uh, so I looked into the literature and saw what kind of issues we should consider when we are designing uh, online uh, uh, ways of collaborating. And uh, the, the things we should consider is whether our technologies work, for example, on any device, whether there is any cost for teachers to join uh, those workshops if they are workshops we are doing online. Uh, how is this for teachers to understand and use our technologies? And have they got the needed skills? If not, what can we do to bridge the gap? Um, uh, also, there may be issues like uh, participants, teachers entering a discussion online late or sharing confidential material. There should be norms uh, shared upfront as to how these things uh, should be managed. Uh, and, and then is the issue of trust, uh, development and connection. Uh, and here from our experience, we know that we need to have one-to-one -one discussions with those teachers that are interested in order to understand each other and start developing some sort of trust and understanding. Uh, and the last point is about privacy, confidentiality, and data collection policies uh, that relate to which platform we are using to run sessions online, like Teams, Skype, or Zoom, uh, and how we ensure that everything is confidential and private. And of course, this links to um, having ethical approvals from our universities before we engage with teachers uh, in any online activity. Um, so what we are practically doing at the moment and how we translated all those theoretical things into practice is that at least at the UK, we are running a series of online workshops with teachers. Uh, so the idea is that uh, we introducing teachers to what design thinking is and also the tools Marianthi and Cronis uh, talked about. And we give them time to play around with the tools and reflect on any problems they faced, uh, how they could possibly use them in their practice, how they would like to see them developing the future. Uh, and then we move on from these uh, sessions where they familiarize themselves with the technologies to understanding their own context, the, their students, uh, any existing technologies they use, uh, any knowledge, skills, attitudes they already have about technologies. And we try to build on those ideas, uh, the, the, the lesson plans or activity plans 
through which design thinking is going to be implemented. And for to help them uh, go through the process of designing, let's say, an activity plan, uh, our colleagues in Athens have uh, come up with a template. Uh, they call it activity plan template, which in a way is structuring the process uh, into certain sub themes, I would say. For example, we ask them to define the learning objectives, to define activities for each stage of design thinking, then uh, this discuss and decide how they are going to assess each stage uh, and how students are going to be engaged in those stages. What I have here is uh, the activity template uh, that it was uh, is coming from the University of Athens, which I put online. I created an online version of it using the Enquire platform. So the idea is that they could go online and start filling in those information. So this is part of the online workshops we are running. So we don't expect teachers to do this on their own time. Of course, if they want to follow this approach, we are very flexible. The idea is that we are having a discussion online and we as a researcher are typing in information uh, so they can have everything ready by the end of the session. And you can see here is uh, justification of the topic of design thinking, um, the technologies they are going to use, the time they need to dedicate to the project. Uh, and we go on like that for every single stage of design thinking. Uh, I want to close this talk uh, by inviting uh, all teachers uh, on this uh, webinar and any contacts you may have with teachers uh, that may find the project interesting and they would like to work with us in developing those educational material or implementing those educational material to get in touch with us. I put here the Gmail of the project and also the, the Twitter uh, handle of, of the project. And we would very much uh, like to hear from you if you think this is something you're interested in. I would like to thank you all very much and invite any questions uh, and also close off uh, the webinar with a reminder that uh, there is an annual Eden conference in June 18th to 20th. Uh, and also there is uh, on Friday tomorrow a workshop about the learning design and analytics uh, that of course you are invited to join. Um, I will stop sharing and uh, we have four minutes for any questions. I think there was a question before about- Yeah, chat. it was a question from Anna Marquez about uh, what what do we think about chat GPT-3? Perhaps uh, we should uh, answer it within the uh, context of our project and how mm -hmm. could students, for example, using chat GPT could uh, impact how they engage with our technologies. Uh, I don't know, Marianne or Cronis, whether you want to give us an answer. Well, regarding chat GPT, I already sent <laughs> my, an answer. It's a kind of indirect, but it, it um, to me, it's 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 yet one more argument why face-to-face -face human communication has special value. Because as we progress, there's going to be more and more uh, activities um, connecting humans or resources or or productions that in the past there were productions that only humans could come up with uh, where computers take charge and we have these automated and uh, produced so what will be important and what the new jobs and the new professions and the new uh, transformations for schooling uh, would be is, um, is is how can humans support humans apart from building and maintaining the infrastructure um, wh what is new and, uh, and, and, and how do we perceive of citizenship in, uh, in the generations to come? Uh, so um, I don't think it's chat GPT by itself. There's a line of different kinds of things coming up from technology, substituting what we perceived up until now to be just uh, human activity. And we need to rethink about what is valuable um, with respect to human communication, contact, and uh, co-creation and growth, which cannot be substituted by the technologies. I have also a complementary view to what the current is saying, and this, I think, these type of tools like ChatGPT three or, or the like, because there are many different is an arsenal of tools. Is it's also a function of pedagogical design, and I think uh, if uh, people are start to 
try out these tools, there is a potential for using them in novel ways to do some provocative intellectual self-regulated learning activities. Just in, in the context of the project, like for instance, in this tool called Choico, there is a there is an authoring tool, but behind that is an, another tool called Blockly that allows for some type of uh, programming. And from there, you can get even some code in JavaScript. So one way is to be able to provoke the students to try out how the code they present could be analyzed by ChatGPT3 to do some improvements or to do some things. And then they will need to explain to the teachers and there where the face-to-face -face communication come back uh, about what they could do better, what could, uh, uh, could be improved. So th this type of self-reflective learning with a kind of companion, but with guidance has a lot of potential. And if you look at the history of technology, similar discussions have been started hundred years ago when electricity came as a commodity, with radio came as a commodity, and even with the, uh, pocket calculators came to the picture. So it's we need to see this in the big context. And, and I think always it's a function of uh, pedagogical design and knowledge engineering, because it's about uh, what what is the background and expert knowledge you have. So, and then, then we can expand more in these tip back models, but the, I, I'm welcoming this disruptive technology because it's a way to provoke the system, no more than that. Thank you. Thanks, Marcelo. I guess since it's here, uh, it will stay. So our efforts should be how to embed it into the design of such models in ways that are helping you know, students uh, reflect on what they are doing or enhance their understanding of the world. Um, I know that most of the people are saying thank you, and actually we thank you for joining this session and uh, sharing some of you sharing your thoughts as well. Um, I would also like to thank all of the presenters for the very interesting talks, and also Carlos from the Eden Network for managing the the whole process. Um, well, I don't know if you want to say anything before we go. Um, uh, first, uh, thank you, Carlos and Tia for inviting us or for organizing this session. And I I will I would like to see that we come back in 15 to 18 months to tell how we advance with results because what we present was just a conceptual design and some uh, uh, conceptualization, but now we are starting to to try out things for real. Hmm? Thank you for me. Yeah. And I'd also like to thank uh, the Eden Network for inviting us and uh, to extend our uh, availability and will willingness to continue networking and to uh, and uh, Thea's invitation for any of you who've been following the seminar uh, to contact your colleagues and uh, and join us in trying out these things since the resources thanks to digital media are available to anybody so uh, anybody can go ahead and try things out and uh, come up with ideas we haven't thought of <laughs>